Welcome to our July 19th First United Methodist Church worship service. We're so glad that you have found your way to us this morning. I am Russ Fries. I am pastor here at First United Methodist Church. And it is our prayer each week, uh, whether you are on site or listening virtually, that you might be blessed. You might connect with God of the universe. To us, that's a big deal, week in and week out. And is our hope and prayer. In fact, how we do our service has elements of that. And, you know, if you went to a friend's home, maybe not quite now with the COVID, but you, you'd, you know, be welcomed in. Typically, you stand and have some small talk at the entryway, and then you typically go into the living room or kitchen and um, becomes deeper conversations and more, you know, lifestyle type stuff. And for us, we kind of do the same thing. So we're going to start with a liturgy. Mike Thomas is going to help lead us in that. In just a second but it's for you to now ready yourself um, I, I'll say you know get yourself comfortable get yourself a cup of coffee would it whatever it makes you comfortable but not some distractions so that you might listen to what God might have to say to you and I truly believe God speaks to us all and I believe God would speak to you if we're open to it so with that I'm gonna invite Mike Thomas up to do our liturgy for this morning Good morning. Our call to worship today. God searches us and knows us. God knows when we sit down and when we rise up. God searches out our path and our lying down. God is acquainted with all our ways. God's hand is ever available to guide us. We cannot escape from God's spirit. Our opening prayer. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our thoughts. We gather with eager longing to know you, ever-present God, and to be known by you. We want to live as your beloved children. Assure us in these moments that you hear our prayers, even as your will is revealed to us. Fill our dreams and our waking hours with radiant hope. May every time of encounter move us to awe and fervent worship. Lead us in your everlasting way. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. This is from the New Living Translation. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. There is no law against these things. This is the word of the Lord. Now Austin will share some special music.
I'd like to share a message from the Finance Committee. During June, giving was down approximately $9,100. This has placed us in a difficult situation to pay our bills and still provide the ministry and programs that make us a church. The expenses of First United Methodist Church continue even as if we are even if we're not worshiping on site during this pandemic. You've just received your giving statements for the second quarter, and I ask that you review them carefully. We ask that you help us by sending your contributions regularly. At the beginning and end of this video service, you will see ways you can contribute to First United Methodist Church. If you have questions, please contact the church office. Pastor Russ is leading us in a, a book study called The Walk by Adam Hamilton. It talks about five essential practices of the Christian life, and I'd lift, like to lift out a portion of that. There's a special joy that comes from hands-on acts of generosity, from being able to see and talk to people you help. But so much of our impact today, together also comes from individual acts on behalf of people we'll never meet. In whatever way they take their part, those who are generous with their time, their financial resources, are putting love into action. And in doing this, they experience the truth of Jesus. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Thank you. Today we are starting a new sermon series. It is from Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It is uh, the fruits of the Spirit, and there are nine qualities or characteristics that we as Christians should have. And if you actually read the few verses above it, you, you got passages of things where, well, we're not supposed to act that way. And um, there's a warning if we do act that way. And so it comes to this passage, actually. It is, yeah, there is nothing here that conflicts with the law. And I'm referring to the Old Testament. So in essence, I, in my way of explaining it, it would be like, you can do these characteristics all day long. They're good for you. In fact, I think they're encouraging us to do this all day long. Do this with people around you and and. It will be a blessing both to you and the people that you interact with. I believe as well it is a kingdom building stuff and characteristics that all of us really uh, should try to achieve. And so we start this journey and uh, we'll have to use other passages of scripture. We really will. Um, for me, I know for today especially, I'm influenced by John Maxwell and Max Lucado and some of the things that they have written. Uh, because it's just good stuff for us. So uh, keep that all in mind as we start our Fruit of the Spirit series. And the first characteristic is love. Obviously, we as a church, we talk about love realistically on a regular occasion, don't we? Um, not too long ago, again, spoke about love and how important and significant. I think we know that is one of the chief characteristics of God, and I think rightfully so we should. At the same token, we some ways we keep talking about it because it's still not always clear for us or, like me, I need reminders about how to do it again uh, another time. So this morning, I'm going to start with a, a couple suggestions from uh, uh, some uh, children, actually, and what they say about love. And you just wonder, how in the world did they come up with these conclusions? So let, let me share a couple of them, if I can. Camille, who's age nine, she was asked, how do you get someone to fall in love with you? And her answer was, shake your hips and hope for the best. I would love to know either what movie or the dynamics at home that got her to say that part. Uh, Tammy, age 10, she's asked about kissing. And she says, it's never okay to kiss a boy. They always slobber all over you, and that's why I stopped doing it. So you got this 10-year-old who must have been doing it in some fashion and stopping, but my hunch is you revisit her in six, seven, eight years, and she's got this boy she likes. Yeah, I think she'd change her tune. And then, of course, Bob Nine. And if he knew any original love songs, and he said, yes, I do. It's, I'm in love with you most of the time, but don't bother me when I'm with my friends. 
And I think a great, honest statement from a nine-year-old boy about love. And, and yet the truth of the matter is how significant love is. Uh, we get this right. And so let me talk about the significance. And this is from John Maxwell. And I, I love this statement. Love is something you make on occasions and fall into at other times. It's been known to produce broken hearts and goosebumps, loss of appetite, and starry eyes. It's inspired some to die and others to kill. Love may make the world go round, but it certainly causes a lot of confusion in the process. Love is most often understood. And I, I think he is spot on with that, and especially what we see culturally and in those small little parts that we watch movies or read. And um, it has a misconception. I think probably one of the biggest one is that it is uncontrollable. You, you and I cannot control love in any stretch of the imagination. So we fall into love, or, and I've heard from many people, they've fallen out of love. And so um, that knot, that physical feeling that you get in your stomach, and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing. And, you know, obviously you, you daydream about it. But the idea that love is controllable, I believe, is not a true statement at all. It's, it's not the biblical love that God tells us this is what love is, and this is how you love other people. And um, I, I sometimes songs do great about um, their creativity and the, the ability to say things. And, and so here's a song about love. I, I think you'll, you'll appreciate it. Written in the 60s, describing love. Who put the ram in the Rama Lama Ding Dong? Who was that man? I'd like to shake his hand for making my baby fall in love with me. Now, those are some profound words, aren't they? Yeah, well, of course they're not. You know, I don't know even know how you, what a Rama Lama Ding Dong is at all. And yet it's supposed to make somebody fall in love. And um, that, that we all get, that doesn't just happen. And we just don't fall into love. Emotionally, we might. Emotional, our feelings might have some of those. Um, but I think every one of us want something more significant and something more profound. All of us. I don't, I don't think a marriage can last if it's just based on feelings. Um, it is based far more, and we're asked far more from what the scriptures teach us about love. So this characteristic, this fruit of the Spirit, I'm hoping that you live by, that I try to live by, and, and it's not always easy, I confess that. Uh, but it's something worth chasing, so to speak. Something worth being part of who we are as our character. And I'll say this, the scriptures are clear. Love is a choice. It's not uncontrollable. Love is actually a choice. Love is something that you decide intentionally to do. Let me read from Colossians 3.14. And over all virtues, put on love, which binds them all together. And so we're asked by God, take love, take it, and then put it on as you go about doing life together and, and bind all the other virtues. I don't believe for a second that God would tell us to do that if it was not possible. And if it was impossible, why would God tell us to do something like that? Uh, we're not just the victim, so to speak, of love, but actually it is a choice that you and I make. Again, more scriptures talk about that as well. 1 John 3.18 Let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and truth. In other words, let's love, the definition of love is we're going to do something with actions and truth. Something we decide on, we make a, an intentional decision about, and we just back up our love, quote unquote, with the things that we do. All right, I, I'm going to confess, this is a bad, I, I apologize ahead of time. A, a boyfriend one day was talking to the girl that he, he just loved. He says, oh honey, I love you so much, I would die for and the relationship must have gotten a little bit strained by this time. And she said to him, well, I hear that from you all the time, but you never do anything about it. Okay, I apologize. That, that was terrible. And uh, all right, I got one more. Husband, huge, huge football fan. Um, loved football, watched it as much as he possibly could. And it's the end of a, a long season from the wife. And finally she comes up to him and says, honey, you watch so much football. I believe you love football more than I do. He thought about it for a minute and says, you know what? Yeah, I do, but I love you more than basketball. 
Oh, just just terrible because it is about our actions, isn't it? What we do. And if you put more emphasis on football, um, do you really love the person? Well, according to scripture, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, We're called to put the love that we have, not just in words, but also in action um, as well. I I had a young man uh, at a wedding and... um, come up to me and say, you know what? You have a beautiful bride, and my wife is beautiful. And she says, you know, I've noticed that lots of pastors seem to have beautiful brides, and I've always wondered why that is. And, and his words really got me upset. He says, you know, you guys know how to talk and preach, and maybe that's what you're doing. You're just talking lots, and you can win them over. And what I wanted to say to him, maybe we talk a, a talk, but also then we walk the walk, and we back it up with our actions as well. And... Um, that's what it is. It is actions indeed, what we do. 1 Corinthians 13, 4. And you're going to hear a lot from 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 13, chapter 13, because we call that the love chapter. And it describes about a lot about love. And I'm going to go through a number of them because they're action words. There's, they're intentional decisions that you can make by yourself. They're not just emotions or feelings. They're not. And it's the things that you do. So uh, 13, 4. Love is patient. Ooh. Love being patient. Ephesians 4 2. Be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Any of you married to somebody who's got some faults? One fault? Yeah. And what are we supposed to do? Be patient with them. And I get, and for me, I'll be honest, I have a hard time being patient at times, but that's what we do. Um, We know what it's like in a relationship to turn the other cheek, to go the second mile, so to speak. That's what patient is, and that is an intentional decision. It's a choice that we make. Hey, I'm going to get upset over this one thing, or you know what, I'm going to let this one go, and, and I'll let this one go. And I'll talk to to my spouse about it and and talk, you know, are there ways we can change this? Or how do I help you through this? Or what do I need to do? And um, that truly is love. And God had patience with us first. And you're going to hear this kind of repetitive as well. We kind of, okay, I need to be more patient. Well, how do I learn that? Well, let's look at what God has done for us. And the patience that God has for us as well. Uh, We're told... That God loved us while we were yet sinners. Well, that, that took a little bit of patience from God Almighty, didn't it? I mean, we, we weren't ready yet. We weren't good church Christian folk at all. Um, Christ was willing to wait on us. And that was a decision and intentional choice as well. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 again. Love is kind. Ephesians 4, 32. Be kind to each other. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another just as God has forgiven you. We'll talk a little bit more about kindness down the road as well, but the ability to care for each other on a day-to-day basis. I don't know about you, and I don't know why this is. Sometimes it is much easier to be kind to a stranger than a person I love greatly. Sometimes it's easier to be kind to a child that's not my own than was my own or kind to a neighbor than my own spouse. And um, kindness goes a long way if we were to do that, of course, to the people who are closest to us, the people that we do love the most, indeed. Again, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. It does, talking about love, it does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Again, things that we can do intentionally and, and I have been, this is what I've been guilty of, especially early in our marriage, um, uh, did dishes. And I, don't use, I don't like doing dishes too well, but when I did it, and you know how I walked around the house after I did my dishes for that one time? I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm a great husband. I did my dishes. Where Kathy has been doing them, you know, the last six days straight or maybe 14 weeks straight, whatever it is. And, you know, it's almost like give me kudos, give me the gold star. And, you know, what does that do to a spouse? If we're envious of what they do or, or we kind of put them down or have false expectations for them, boasting, whatever, and that's hard to live by. And it truly is. Uh, loving them just as they are, what great security uh, for them and not, you know, measuring them out maybe to somebody else um, indeed. I'd say this, 
Love, if anything, is giving in a relationship. Um, you, you give to the other person, and you don't keep score. You don't keep score of, man, I gave first, I've given double today, um, and I'm going to keep track of all this. And you know what? I'm going to just pause right here while you catch up to how much I've been giving you lately. That is not love. Um, not at all. And so we have to make sure that we're constantly giving and giving and giving, and we're told to give 100% of ourselves to, the, to our spouse, as well as they're supposed to give 100%. And that makes it hard, and you almost have to acquiesce to make sure that the other person, the person you love, can give, because they love doing that. Eventually, obviously, when you keep giving, or and it doesn't feel like your spouse is, it's, it's going to hurt. Or there's something that takes place and it hurts. And I love what C.S. Lewis says in this, this part. Uh, it says this, love anything and your heart will certainly be wrung and possibly broken. If you want to be sure of keeping it intact, you must give your heart to no one. Lock it up safe in the casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken, but it will become unbreakable, impenetrable, irredeemable. And the only place outside of heaven where it, you can be saved from all dangers of love is hell. Wow. And, and let's be honest, if we're going to love somebody, we do have to put ourselves in a vulnerable place. And I think we're asked to do that. Um, that's what love is. That's what love does. 1 Corinthians 13 again, verse 7. It always protects, always trusts, always perseveres. And again, these are things that we can choose to do or not choose. I'd say it's more not falling out of love emotion-wise, but choosing not to love. I, I believe that. We choose not to love somebody. And that's hard. So we have to do acts of kindness, do loving acts, words of love. And we continue those, and that paves the way for us to love somebody else. You know, a statement that Jesus had, and Jesus was, a, a as we thought of the Old Testament and the expectations that God had upon his people, you know, the, the Old Testament laws and rules and Ten Commandments. Jesus came and he raised that bar, and he really did. And and I love this statement where Christ says, and it's also very, very challenging for us. Um, love one another. We've been talking about that now for a while. As I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. And we can look at what Christ has done going to a cross. You think about the people who sat there and put Jesus on the cross. For some of them, they hated him. They spit on him. They cursed him. And Jesus says, love you guys. Pilate, I'm going to just get this occurrence so I don't lose my job. Let's get this over with. Let's let this criminal go free. I mean, that's the sort of love that Christ has for us. And the expectation, the biblical love that we would have for people around us. I tell you, that's pretty challenging stuff. Pretty hard stuff in so many ways. And... Um, encourage us that we go that second mile. It really does help any relationship that we are part of um, indeed. Love becomes vulnerable as we start giving ourselves away and, and people not always accept it. Um, we need to open ourselves up, not, not hold people back at a distance. And, and I get that that can be hard itself as well. Open up arms. And it's so powerful. It truly is. Love is, well, I believe the most powerful force in the universe. I am convinced of that. Uh, definitely here on this planet. Either love for money or fame or ambition or love for another human being. Uh, we can do some wonderful things with it as well. Um, a guy was uh, about ready to propose to his girlfriend. He had been thinking about it for a while, loved her deeply. He waited for that right moment and, and brought the ring out of his pocket, got down on his knee. The, the moon was at the right angle as he got down and, and said to her, sweetheart, I just want you to know how much I love you and how much I want to marry you. Now, I, I can't give you everything, and you need to know that as well. 
I don't have the nice car that Johnny Green has, and I don't have the yacht that he has or the money that he has. But I want you to know that I love you, and I will always be with you. And, and she sat back and looked deep in his eyes as well and says, Well, sweetheart, I want you to know that I love you too. But could you tell me just a little bit more about this Johnny Green? Yeah, um, love does not do that. We accept people for who they are, and we love them anyway. And love is an intentional choice. So I encourage you, are you loving today? Please keep First United Methodist Church in your prayers. Um, we will not be open for the month of July, and we will revisit this for the month of August. And um, as the surge has gone around us, I, I think it's prudent for us. I know for about 20% of us, we want to be here. I mean, that's what the studies have said. And uh, I actually happen to be one of the group. I can't wait to be here. and I'm willing to take risks, but um, I think it's smart for us to wait. Uh, I would hate to bury anybody. Uh, we've got sweet folks here. I would hate to bury anybody because we met here at church. So please bear with us. Um, you can continue to watch us online. And, and if there are things that you need, do not hesitate at all. Call the church office. Obviously, you found us on Facebook or the website. And um, send us a note, and we'll try and get back to you, pray for you. Lots of ways we can do some things just to be an encouragement to one another. So as at this day, I would like to leave you with, I uh, want you to live by faith, be known by love, and to be a voice of hope for our world. I pray this all in Christ's name. Amen.